squawking and screaming, and people start throwing stones at him. And the wizard is in the chambers having the laugh of his life <laughs> because the king is a stork. So, finally, the king, after several years of flying around his kingdom and roosting on various houses, it's not his kingdom anymore. The neighboring king came in, struck a deal with the wizard. The wizard's now regent, and the king's a stork. So what can the king do? Well, he takes up with another flock of storks, and he's flying back and forth between Europe and Africa and Persia. And he sees as much as he can see. And after many years, the king begins to realize that the brain of donkeys and the mane of horses and the chirping and the buzzing and the roaring and all the sounds that animals make aren't just sounds, it's language. So the king realizes that even the trees speak and they speak of where find water and where minerals are hiding deep in the Finally, one day, the king is sitting at the lake, and he gets up and he walks around. And he's just beside himself. He can see his own over his people, and he has seen that his people are getting poorer and poorer. And just the merchants have nobody to buy anything, because nobody has money. And in the meantime, those who are in power are getting richer and richer and richer, and all the while talking about how they just don't have enough. They got to get more, more gold, more gems, more jewels, more slaves, more everything. And his wizard, his wizard is having the time of his life. His wizard spends most of his days in the king's own harem with all the girls and the servants and the grapes on the plates, and the wine, and everything that comes with being a big shot in an ancient, ancient kingdom. So finally, the king flies back to the lake, and he's sitting on a stone, or standing on a stone, because storks don't sit. And he's got one leg up like most storks do, kind of tucked by his knee, and he's thinking, rocking back and forth and thinking. And all of a sudden, a large toad pops up next to him and says, I know who you are. You're one sorry stork, aren't you? You had it all, kingdom. Wives, more wives than you. Children, horses, armies, gold, everything. Well, I think I'm going to do it, even though you don't deserve it. And all of a sudden, the king, the, the toad coughs, and he coughs, and he coughs, and up comes an enormous pearl. Everybody knows that toads like to hoard jewels, and they hoard them in their stomach. Diamonds and rubies and pearls, all kinds of things. And soon, the toad starts croaking really loud. And all his wives come up out of the muck, and they start coughing up. Up comes a ruby. Up comes a big, big diamond. Up comes a mother of gold. A whole horde. <laughs> Oh, God, they've got to have a nose. 
Pass it up. 